For this isometric, they've asked us to draw at a scale of 1 to 1, and they've also asked us to make A the lowest point of the drawing. There's the point A over there, and there in the top view. So I'm going to start off by going and drawing just this rectangular base with the two holes over there that you can see going through it. Um, I'm going to do that quickly because that's pretty straightforward. And then I'll pause to do a little bit more when it comes to this top part over here, just to explain how those angles and the auxiliary view that goes with them is going to have to work. Okay, our base is done. Don't forget these two little depth lines over there. They're easy to forget about. Okay, now if we go to the top part over here now, you see over here in our front view we have a hexagon over there. And if we go to our top view, we can see that the sides of the hexagon are going to be 30 millimeters. But also in our top view, if we have a look here carefully, we'll be able to see that there's our hexagonal prism sitting over here. It's also got a square on the top here and if we do what we know to do with our set squares we'll be able to take our set square slide that along and you can see that that square there lines up with the hidden detail line that goes all the way through this front view and the other side of the square also lines up with the other hidden detail line so we know that that's a hole that's going right through the shape and then if you have a look here, these two triangles here, which are both at a 60 degree angle, okay, which of course is the same as our hexagon, those two sides over there, we need to find out where they are here in our top view. And again, if we take our set square and we slide it along, you'll be able to see there that the end of that triangle meets up with this little shape over here. So we know that this little shape here is this whole surface of this triangle and that little one over there of course will then be this little surface here. The rest of this hexagon here is then this big prism that's sitting on our base. Now another important thing here is that you can see that there are center lines drawn here on the top view which tells us that this prism is placed in the perfect center of our base over here. You'll see those same center lines here as well, just to show us that that hexagon has got to be in the center of the base. Now, of course, with any hexagon, the first thing we're going to have to quickly go and do is we need to go and draw an auxiliary view for that hexagon to be able to go and transfer that from here into our isometric. So I'm going to quickly go and construct that. Okay, you can see that for my auxiliary view, I've drawn the full hexagon and the, the rectangle that goes around it. But then you'll also see that I've added in these two extended sides here. And if you look, you'll see that that's exactly the same as what we've got here in our drawing. And I know that those are at a 60 degree angle because I used my 60 degree set square and it lines up with the side of my hexagon. And I'm going to use the measurements from that, of course, to go and draw in this view. Okay, so immediately I can now go and start transferring the measurements that I have here onto my base. Now remember I said that these center lines here tell us that this must be centered on our base. So we know that our base is 110 millimeters long, so we can go and measure 55 over there, and then go and draw in a nice light center line over there, to know that that's the center lengthwise. And then we know that our base is 60 millimeters wide, so we can do the same thing on this 30 millimeter line and go and draw in another center line over there. Okay, that gives us a center to be able to work with there. And now we need to just line up our auxiliary view with that center. That's why I've gone and drawn these center lines in here as well. Okay, the other thing, of course, we need is the width. And we can see the total width over here, okay, of our prism is 30 millimeters. So the first thing I'm going to go and do is measure that out and of course from my center point there you can see now I'm straight away using my center point I'm going to measure 15 millimeters to each side of that center point and I'm going to draw in two construction lines there on each of those points that shows me the width of my prism that's going to have to go onto the base okay and then of course 
Now I can go and start putting in my rectangle that I have here onto this first side over here of my base. Okay, oh sorry, of the prism which is on the base. So I'm going to go and measure and see that my halfway mark. Okay, so that's 30 millimeters to that side and another 30 to that side. So on that line there, I can go and measure 30 millimeters to my one side, 30 millimeters to my other side. And then I can go and draw up two construction lines which come up from those two points and then I can measure the height so my height I can see about 26 millimeters to the center and then another 26 millimeters up okay so we're going to go on those two lines and we're going to measure 26 and 26 which of course is a total of 52 so I'm going to start on 52 there measure 26 millimeters up make a mark and then another 26 to there and then i can go and draw in the top line then of that rectangle and then i'm going to draw a line in as well to show me where that center was okay so there's my there is my rectangle for that front face and then i'm going to go and measure to go and find these two points over here okay i can see there that my measurements are 15 millimeters on each side so i'm going to go to my isometric and measure 15 millimeters there mark it off and then 15 millimeters there mark it off and then i can project that up onto the top line as well because i know of course that the distance here is going to be the same as the distance there so i don't have to go measure it again i can simply take that point point and project it up to there and then i can immediately go and draw in the front face of my hexagon there my hexagonal prism by simply going and joining those dots Okay, and then once we've got that done, we can start having a look at adding the depth in of, of this, how deep it's got to go. And we know how deep it's got to go because we plotted that out with these two construction lines over here. Okay, so we can immediately go and project that baseline across. We know it's going to stop over there. And then we're going to go and project a line, construction line for each of those points across. Okay, we don't have to do these two over here because that would be hidden detail. And then we can go and measure. We know that the thickness of that was 30 millimeters. So I can go and mark off 30 millimeter lengths on each of those construction lines. And then using each of those points, that of course is going to give me the other side of my prism. Now this line over here I'm going to do in construction and that's because I know that they still got to have this little rib over here which is going to come in here somewhere so I can't draw that dark yet but I can go and draw the top part of this over here in dark. Okay that's great. Now that little piece of that little rib over there okay which you can see there and see there in our top view in our top view it says it's six millimeters wide. Okay, so again, using my, one of my center lines I have here, I'm going to go and measure three millimeters to each side of that center line. And then I'm going to draw in two construction lines for the width of that little rib. And then I'm going to go and measure from the base point here of my hexagon out to that corner there, which would be the measurement from there to there. I'm going to measure that and then go and place that, which is 30 millimeters. I'm going to go and place that then from that point over there, which is in line with this corner, which was the same corner we have here. I'm going to place it there and I'm going to go and measure out my 30 millimeters to there because that's where that point would then be. Okay. Now that has got to line up and meet up with the point somewhere over here on this line. 
because you can see that that's where it meets up and of course that's got to be on the center of that line I'm going to find the center first and then remember it is six millimeters thick so we need to go three millimeters to either side of that center point and by doing that I now know that I can go and join up that point that I've just found 30 millimeters along that line to that point that I've just found over there and then I know that I'm going to have a dark line here showing its thickness and then I know that I need to draw another angled line joining up to the other point up here which was its thickness at the top and then I can go and draw in this line dark because I know it's going to be there I can also then go and draw in this line until it hits the base of my prism okay there's also then going to be a little line over there but then as that hits into the base of the prism there needs to be a line here somewhere and that line will be created by joining that point and that point of course because that's going to cause and make a little ridge over there so we're going to go and draw in that little ridge and then of course there's going you will still be able to see that little piece at the back of there the rest would be hidden details so we don't draw it in and now we can go and we can draw in this back line as well okay so that's almost done except that this little rib over here is going to stick out a little bit over here so unfortunately to be able to get that we're going to have to go and reconstruct that whole little rib over here to see which little piece actually sticks out but part of it we already have so we can just project it across which does make it a bit easier we have the width lines which we can just project across over there we also know that if we take this base point across over here that this measurement still has to be 30 millimeters out to get to the end of it and now you can see that it will stick out slightly okay because that goes past this front part here there's the 30 millimeter line so we know that this little line over here up till there is going to be dark and now we just need to get that little angle piece that's going to come up and we know of course that that is also going to hit into a line like this which of course will be that line over there that corner so we can project that across okay and then go and find its center point remember that was 30 millimeters to get to the end of it so it centers at 15 and we need to measure three millimeters to the right i don't have to measure the other three millimeters because that's going to be a hidden detail line and now I can simply go and line those two up over there. So that little piece over there is going to stick out slightly. Okay, then I can go and draw in this line over here, dark. But we're not done yet. Now we have to go and add in that hole at the top there, which we can see is 22 millimeters wide and also 22 millimeters long, which we can see in the top view there. So in the front view, which they've given us. So 22 by 22, but now it's on the shape over here, but it's got to be on the center of that shape. So we're going to have to go and find center lines again. So go and measure and find the center lines there. It's both of them are 15 millimeters in. Okay, so we mark that center and we're going to mark this center as well. And then draw two construction lines going across there to get the center point of that face. And now we'll use the center point of that face to then go and make sure that our square over here, which is 22 by 22, is actually in the center. To do that, we measure 11 millimeters to each side. That's half of our 22. 11 millimeters to that side, 11 millimeters to that side. And we're going to draw a construction line along each of those two points. And then from our center point again, the other side's also 22. So we're going to go... 11 millimeters to the one side and again 11 millimeters to the other side and now we can draw those in dark because we have our other construction lines which show us where to stop those lines so we can quickly go and darken that and draw that in and that gives us our square on the top but also we know that it's a hole that goes right through the shape so we need to show our depth line which is going to be over there and we'll go right down through the shape and there we have it